welcome to the Cathedral of St. John the Evangelist here in downtown Cleveland uh, for this most special event. It, it's a great day and a, a glorious day for the Church of Cleveland and we're excited and uh, filled with great joy. Thank you all for being here today. Also thanks to all the multitude of people watching this morning's proceedings uh, live on the diocesan uh, website and through the traditional and social media. I'm Father Don Oleksiak. I'm delegate to the Apostolic Administrator uh, for the Catholic Diocese of Cleveland. We come together this morning to share with you good news concerning the leadership of the Catholic Diocese of Cleveland. In a moment, I'll introduce to you Bishop Daniel Thomas, the Bishop of the Diocese of Cleveland and our Apostolic Administrator for the last seven months. Bishop Thomas will have an important announcement to share but first, I'd like to acknowledge some of those who are gathered here today, members of the College of Consultors, Presbyteral Council, senior staff, a diocesan staff, and uh, the faithful of the diocese. We're so grateful for your presence. Before introducing our apostolic administrator, I would ask that we pause now for a moment to join together in prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, God, eternal shepherd, who govern your flock with unfailing care, we thank you for granting us in your boundless fatherly love a new bishop for your local church here in Northeast Ohio. May he always please you by his holiness and to show us watchful care. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. At the end of the comments this morning, there will be a brief question and answer. And now here with our major announcement, Bishop Daniel Thomas, the Bishop of the Diocese of Cleveland and the Apostolic Administrator of the Diocese of Cleveland, Bishop of Toledo. You haven't lost that job yet, have you? Sorry about that. <laughs> Praised be Jesus Christ, now and forever. Good morning, everyone. On this date, July 11th, the Church Universal honors one of her most notable saints, Saint Benedict, who was well known for teaching, when the guest comes, Christ comes. Today, our local church, here in these eight counties of Northeast Ohio, has the honor of welcoming a guest who comes in the name of Christ Jesus. This morning at 6 a.m. local time, noon in Rome, the Holy See announced that our Holy Father, Pope Francis, has appointed the next bishop for the Diocese of Cleveland. In the name of all the priests, deacons, consecrated religious and lay faithful, it is a blessing and a privilege to welcome you, Bishop Nelson Perez, who today have been appointed by Pope Francis to serve as the 11th Bishop of the Diocese of Cleveland. In Bishop Nelson Perez, the Diocese of Cleveland is receiving a faithful, enthusiastic, and joyful shepherd for Christ and his church. With his warm personality, Bishop Perez will quickly endear himself to all who meet him. And Bishop Perez will find in the Diocese of Cleveland a true spiritual home filled with dedicated and devoted people, a family of faith that I am grateful to have had the privilege to serve as apostolic administrator. I personally look forward to working with Bishop Perez in announcing the gospel in Northern Ohio. I ask all Catholics and all people of goodwill in both the Diocese of Cleveland and the Diocese of Toledo to pray for Bishop Perez that his new Episcopal ministry will bear great spiritual fruit. At this time, I am delighted to follow the teaching of St. Benedict and to welcome to the podium the guest who comes in the name of Christ, 
the Bishop Designate of the Diocese of Cleveland, Bishop Nelson Perez. Thank you. Thank you so much. I've been given instructions not to lean on the podium because I would end up over there somewhere. God is good and all the time. I'm thrilled, uh, absolutely thrilled to be here. Uh, I've been getting texts and calls uh, and emails since 6 o'clock this morning. Thank God I got up early. And, and they all said that they all had the, th this theme. Congratulations and Cleveland rocks. <laughs> <laughs> I must confess that I am deeply humbled and at the same time filled with great joy and gratitude uh, to our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for calling me to serve uh, the Diocese of Cleveland as its 11th bishop. I was ordained a priest of the Archdiocese of Philadelphia on May 20th of 1989. I certainly never imagined then that I would one day serve as auxiliary bishop of the Diocese of Rockville Center in New York and now here today to begin my service as your bishop. God's ways and thoughts are not ours, but I know, I know, and I trust his ways are always better and deeper than our own comprehension. I thank God for this awesome, incredible privilege to embark on this journey with you, the wonderful people of Cleveland. I am absolutely thrilled to be here with you. Thank you for being here with me today. I'm grateful to Archbishop Christophe Pierre, Apostolic Nuncio to the United States for his joyful encouragement and support upon calling me to inform me of the Holy Father's desire that I come to serve you here in Cleveland. And I'm grateful that I could finally talk about it. This guy called me two and a half weeks ago. We join together thanking God for the faithful service of Bishop Richard Lennon. I remember watching the video of his announcement of his early retirement due to his medical condition and saying to myself, there is a man of profound humility and courage, embracing his limitations and making a decision out of love for you and for the church. He truly still serves the church, and in a particular way, our diocese, through the offering of his prayer and his sacrifices. This is certainly a powerful and loving gift that sustains all of us. While our physical abilities may change with time, our hearts and minds are always capable of being shared for the glory of God and for the good of others. Bishop Lennon is a powerful witness to this enduring truth. Bishop Thomas and I go back many, many years since we were all priests, both priests of Philadelphia. And I know that he has been a truly wonderful shepherd for you during these last seven months as your apostolic administrator, as the church discerned your next, who your next bishop would be. And I know that you join me in expressing all of our deep gratitude to Bishop Thomas for being so present in your midst, in addition to his continuing faithful ministry to the people of the Diocese of Toledo. Bishop Thomas, thank you so much. I told you I would go off the script a little bit, okay? A couple of weeks ago, we were in Indianapolis uh, for the spring meeting of uh, the June meeting of the Bishops' Conference. And they give us these little tags so that we all know who we are. 
And, and Bishop Thomas had one that said, you know, Bishop Thomas, Bishop of Toledo. And then it turned it around and it said, Bishop Thomas, Apostolic Administrator of the Diocese of Cleveland. So he was doing double duty even there. But I know that he has been so present to you. Uh, I heard it from other bishops, how he come and go and come and go, and, and, and what a gift uh, he has been for you. We also uh, express, and I also express, deep gratitude to, to Father Donald Alesiak, who had the, the added responsibility of serving uh, as delegate to Bishop Thomas. Thank you, Father. Thank you so much. And I will continue to depend on their guidance and wisdom as I begin the great work to con learn the great work of the Diocese of Cleveland. Learn about your service to the gospel, your history, your inherent beauty that is reflected in all of you. These are all great gifts from God. I know that I will see the face of the Lord reflected in the many new friends that I look forward to meeting here on the days ahead. I come to you with a great love for the Lord and his church and a profound love for the priesthood, a priesthood that I received as a wonderful gift 28 years ago. I'm filled with excitement and enthusiasm to get to know my brother priest here in the Diocese of Cleveland, these wonderful eight counties that bring together the Church of God in this area, the deacons, the religious, and the faithful, and learn all I could possibly learn to serve you with the grace of God to the very best of my ability. For the last five years, I have been blessed to serve as auxiliary of the Diocese of Rockville Center on Long Island. To Bishop Murphy, William Murphy, Bishop Emeritus, Bishop John Barris, who's the newly installed Bishop of Rockville Center, been there six months, They've been a great help to me. Both these guys have helped me so much to learn of their love for the church and how I could imitate their love for the church. And my brother auxiliary bishops, Bishop Brennan and Bishop Anje, who are truly, truly brothers uh, to me. I don't have words, I really don't have words to express to you to these guys the gratitude that I feel for their kindness, their friendship, and the joy and enthusiasm which, which they received and embraced me uh, five years ago. The Archdiocese of Philadelphia taught me to be a priest, and these bishops taught me to be a bishop. While I have so much to learn, trust me, so much to learn, they and you will continue to lay the foundation for me and I will hold their friendship and your friendship very close to my heart as I begin to work with you and thank God for being able to serve the people of Rockville Center during these last five years. So I hope that you express your gratitude to them as they helped to form me and now you pick up and continue to form me. You're not done. In 1960, my parents, David and Emma, along with my older brother David, who watches the unfolding of these events from heaven, came to this country from Cuba, seeking to preserve the freedom that God had given them, but which was quickly taken away. As I said to Pope Francis last year in Rome, I was made in Cuba and unpackaged here in Miami. For six months later, I was born in Florida. A few years later, we moved to northern Jersey, where I grew up in a little town called West New York, overlooking the inspiring, magnificent skyline of the city. My brother, Louis Martin, was born in Hoboken a few years later. I've been so blessed to be raised in a faith-filled family, one that nurtured my faith and ultimately my vocation to the priesthood. Without them, I simply would not be here today. It's that simple. I continue to rely on their support and learn from their devotion to the Lord. And now I would like to say a few words of greeting to all the ethnic communities represented here in the Diocese of Cleveland. 
I know that the church of God here in Cleveland is, is a diverse church, which is a Catholic church. That's what it means to be Catholic, right? Uh, and so I'm so thrilled to be able to learn uh, more and more of all the different ethnic groups that compose uh, this wonderful church. Uh, for the last five years, uh, this Cuban-American lived in a Polish parish in, in eastern Long Island. I would like to say a few words in Spanish to my brothers and sisters of the Hispanic community. Deseo expresar un saludo especial y cariñoso al pueblo hispano de esta diócesis. Es con gran alegría que vengo hoy a comenzar mi camino como obispo entre ustedes. Como muchos de ustedes, mi familia y migrantes de Cuba vinieron a este país buscando una vida mejor y un lugar para realizar sus sueños. Estoy muy consciente de los desafíos y las inquietudes que esta realidad presenta para el pueblo hispano, pues lo he vivido también yo en mi propia vida. Deseo ser para ustedes su voz y un signo de esperanza y del amor tan especial que Dios tiene por todo su pueblo. Espero con gran entusiasmo conocerlos pronto y que ustedes me conozcan a mí. Les pido que oren por mí al comenzar esta nueva etapa de mi ministerio in La Iglesia. I hope you all got that. <laughs> in closing, I ask for your prayers and patience as I get to know you and you, me. In particular, I pray fervently that through the intercession of our Blessed Mother, who has always been an integral part of my life, the intercession of St. John the Evangelist, the patron of this absolutely magnificent cathedral, when I walked here in here last night, I said, wow, the pictures on the internet don't even come close. <laughs> I look to the Blessed Mother uh, each day for wisdom and inspiration. Again, I thank you for your wonderful warm welcome. I'm so very happy to be here with you, to learn from you, to grow with you, and serve you with pastoral devotion. Please do not hesitate to say hello. If you see me as I venture out, eager to experience my new home here in Cleveland, in these wonderful eight counties that compose this church, especially if you see me walking around the uh, uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame that I understand is rather close. Thank you very much. God bless you. We have an opportunity to uh, field a few questions, if anyone has questions uh, briefly to ask. Uh, B Bishop, uh, Mark Uricki from WCPN Radio. Hi, Mark. Um, you talked about this being a diverse church in Cleveland. You know, a, a lot of these people are coming off a very conservative pope and now to a moderately liberal pope, uh, and there's a kind of political division within that flock. How do you deal with that? I don't, I don't like to use those categories, to be honest with you. I think, uh, uh, to me, the, the Holy Father is speaking the gospel. He's talking about the gospel and the tradition of, of the church and, and, and really holding fast to it. Really, that he puts his own spin on it? Absolutely. But so did Pope Benedict, so did John Paul II. Each, you know, the Holy Spirit gives, uh, gives the church, the Pope, that it needs at the time that it needs it. And, and, uh, and you know, I, I'm, I'm thrilled, you know, to be here uh, during the Pope of uh, Pope Francis, during his reign as, as our pontiff. Um, I, I don't, that part of me doesn't worry me as much, to be honest with you, because the Spirit guides the church, guides the Pope more than what you and I could ever even imagine. Paris, Paul Orlowski from uh, Channel 19 here in Cleveland. Hi, Obviously, you had to keep a secret, but you had time to study the Diocese of Cleveland. And mm -hmm. what do you see as the opportunities as well as the challenges facing this specific diocese? 
Well, initially, what I know is what I read on, on the internet. Uh, you know, it's obviously a very vibrant church with a lot of history, a lot of history, a uh, great number of priests and deacons and religious, um, you know, a, a powerful Catholic education system, um, a powerful Catholic charities. Uh, as I read, uh, you know, the, the uh, uh, ch Catholic charities, in, it, it's the face of God's mercy. We all are the face of God's mercy, but, but in a special way that I saw that as uh, really jumping out as the work that is being done here. As far as the challenges, I, had to, I have to get to know them. You know, uh, I, I really didn't think too much about the challenges. You know, I, I, uh, just to build upon the history and the great work that has been done here by, by all of you and the bishops that have led you and the priests that, that have led you and are with you right now, um, my hope is to just get in line along with you uh, and to continue to build upon that. Quick follow-up. It's a bit off topic, but you sure. lived in Miami, Philadelphia, and New York. Mets, Yankees, Phillies. <laughs> wow. Or Marlins. Well, right There's now, no right, answer. right now, I am all Cavaliers, all Indians, and all Browns. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Boy, these guys are easy. <laughs> All these softball questions. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, and I'll have an opportunity to see you individually. One more I think one more over here. 677,000 Catholics in the diocese. How exciting is that for you? Super exciting. Are you kidding? That's like, when I saw that, you know, that's, that's amazing. That is amazing. A lot of work to be done, you know, and... and um, you know, my, my, uh, someone asked me not too long, so what's your vision for the church? And, and I went back to, I hope that these 670,000 Catholics, each one of them, will become, as Pope Francis talks about, missionary disciples, right? Uh, a, a missionary church, a church that is, a church that's on the way, the church that is on mission, you know, uh, a church, he uses these four words, five words. A church that, that is proactive, a church that is involved, so, uh, involved in the life of people, a church that accompanies, a church that is fruitful, a church that is joyful. And, and I hope that these 670,000 missionary disciples will go out, each one of them, and call more people to get to know Jesus Christ and, and love the church. Uh, that those 670,000 people that make up this local church, our church, my church, uh, it's all potential. It's all potential. Um, and we have to be joyful and excited and enthusiastic about that. And I'm thrilled, I can't wait. I have to wait two more months though. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Former Cleveland Bishop Pilla uh, was very active, involved in uh, some issues like urban sprawl here, something that is really Cleveland has suffered from. Um, it's, downtown tends to be having a, a, a bounce back now. Um, I just, it just made me think, are, are you interested in what you might consider so-called secular issues that you might want to get involved in here in the community? The church is always interested in the world that it lives in, right? We're not apart from the world, so the answer to that is absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and the church brings to that, uh, you know, world around us in which we live in the midst of that world, we're not separate from it, brings the gift and the, and the wealth of his wisdom, its faith, its hope, and, and this incredible treasure of, uh, of the social teachings of the church that could enlighten and strengthen and guide the people around us. So in answer to your question, without a doubt. Well, Bishop, again, uh, welcome, and it's a great uh, joy to have you here. And for those of you who don't know, um, I've only known him since 11 o'clock last night. and. Uh, 
and you don't know this as well, but he experienced uh, 10 hours in an airport and when Bishop Thomas and I picked him up last night, he was so joyful. Anybody who could sit in an airport for 10 hours and still be happy <laughs> is going to bring us uh, great joy and happiness. And uh, the Church of Cleveland just is just, uh, uh, just rejoicing today for this great news. We have much to rejoice and to celebrate. Just in conclusion, then, uh, a special thanks to uh, the major superior religious who are here, Abbott and sisters. I forgot to mention you earlier. Thank you for your presence, as well as for all of you who joined us this morning for this uh, great event. For our friends in the media uh, and uh, for all of us, uh, we continue to rejoice as we now move into the next uh, phase of the reality of the life of the Church of Cleveland. Uh, Bishop Perez will be available for short interviews uh, we ask you to see Deacon Jim Armstrong and Bob Tayak who will be coordinating that process. Uh, Bishop Thomas will be celebrating the noon mass here at the cathedral, and uh, Bishop Perez will be the homilist, and you are certainly all welcome to join us for that mass. Uh, this now does conclude our press conference. We encourage you to watch uh, more coverage on the Diocesan of Cleveland website uh, via the Diocesan e-newsletter and on social media. And finally, uh, before we exit the cathedral, uh, Bishop Perez and Bishop Thomas will take a few minutes uh, now to pray at the Resurrection Chapel uh, where the predecessors of the bishops of Cleveland uh, are entombed. So we ask you to join us in prayer now. Bishops. <laughs>